G'day, and welcome to my Sons of Behemat showcase. I'm about to put this army up in the display cabinet, so I thought I might pause for a minute and showcase my army that I've been featuring in some of the tournament recap videos that you may have enjoyed. And for me, I have had an absolute pleasure building, playing this army. For me, it's been an absolute converter's dreams because nothing I have done is off the table. There's no limits when it comes to Gargan. Something that would look ridiculous with a Bloodthirster or a Lariel or some other type of big monster or behemoth in Age of Sigma actually looks really good and you can make some crazy ideas work when it comes to the Gargans. And for me, you know, I, I was drawing my inspiration from those mythical stories about the wandering giants, the wandering Gargans that featured in Warhammer Fantasy Battles, in, you know, mythic tales in the real world, in different cultures. And for me, I thought about my Gargans as very much that traditional raiding of villages, wanting food and ale and chasing down shiny things and, you know, being like a, a magpie collecting all the shiny things that they got no idea what it is, but it just kind of looks cool and they'll strap it on their little belts. But when I thought about my Gargan army, you know, something that I really enjoyed over the last couple of years is tying my different armies together in some fashion. When I did my Cities of Sigma, my Gloom Spike Gits, I tied them up with different little Easter eggs and little nods to each other. And this was no different to my son's army because my son, my Cities of Sigma army was based in Akshi. I had found a little spot in between Tempest Eye and Hallow Heart called the Opal Isles. And that's kind of where I built my city of Noltoff. Um, you know, a bit of a spin to new Altdorf, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles, uh, uh, the, the Altdorf, you know, the, the capital city. But for me, when I was um, building this particular army, I thought, how can I give these little nods and the Gargans raiding the villages and knowing there's going to be cities and towns all around Akshi, I thought it was a great way to kind of tie up my armies and you know, you'll start to see in the models that you know I've, I've got captured soldiers, I've got some of the treasures, I've got shields, I've got different things from my city's army that I've integrated as well as other little things and when I initially started this army I had planned to do charcoal skin and when I did my first kind of black brown you know charcoaly type skin i wasn't really happy with the test scheme so as i went through the soulbound rpg the role-playing game it has some really extensive lore on akshi and there's this awesome map called the great parch that um, i'd spent a lot of time pre preparing my knowledge for cities of sigma and you know i'd found this place in the great parch where um, i was able to kind of pinpoint my narrative home for my frosty gargants i'd always wanted to do a frosty army i initially actually wanted to do it very much with my flesh eater courts uh, and i never quite did it with then so it was a good opportunity to find um, this little frosty place that i could try some different skin tones some different ideas and i thought about my gargants being in the realm of fire despite being frosty and you know they're not made of snow but um I, I was thinking about you know these gargans are off the raiding and you know if they're going out raiding you know something maybe it's assassin assassin's creed kind of kicking in here but um i got inspired a little bit by by viking raiders and the idea of going into town stomping grabbing all the stuff and then leaving with their goodies so I try to kind of tie that all in together that hopefully you can see some nods. It's, it's not 100% Viking. There's no Ragnar Lothbrok in my army, but certainly, you know, I, I tried to tie in some of those themes of raiding and pillaging and kicking things over. And, you know, I, I was able to bring that to life, hopefully through the bits that I used. And I went crazy with bits. Um, I had asked friends, I'd gone to bit sites and, you know, I, was, I just looked at all my different bits box and thought, what would a Gargant want to collect? And, you know, you'll notice that I had, you know, the Stormcast uh, Dias, uh, Endless Spell that I used as a shield for the Gatebreaker. I had a Bloodthirster Axe on a Gatebreaker. I had um, a Skaven cl uh, Plague Claw Catapult, the, the big, you know, swingy thing instead of a flail on the Gatebreaker. 
Um, I had uh, tusks from a thunder tusk. Um, I got the rock from the Cygore to kind of recreate a, a, a Gargant throwing a rock, which was actually funny because I built that before the Battle Tome came out. So I'm lucky that I was able to actually get a shooting attack. You know, the Endrin Rigger Balloon, Beard from a Tree Lord Ancient Sylvaneth. Um, I even got to a point where I actually bought a cheap heat gun from the, the local hardware store. And I was able to melt down the bat, you know, I've got so many like Cities of Sigma, like Phoenix Guard and just, you know, Free Guild Guard. And they've all got really cool banners and, you know, one in every 10 or one in every five needs a banner. And I've normally got a whole bunch of spare banners. So I used a heat gun to kind of melt some down and to create almost like loincloths for my man crushes, which was, um, again, a nice little ode to some of my city's armies as well. With the man crushes, um, that probably took me the most amount of time because the kit is monoposed and the last thing I wanted in my army was to have nine of the exact same man crusher. So using a hobby saw and green stuff, I try to re repose the arms and legs to recreate action. I just didn't want them all like stumbling forward. I wanted to recreate them throwing things, kicking things, stomping things, um, maybe tripping, you know, all types of weird and wonderful movements that could at least, again, bring to life the Gargants and that fun and that joy and that, you know, um, curiosity that a Gargant would have. And um, while there's a couple of others that I haven't shown off in this video because they're not painted, uh, it was really just trying to show off the different parts. And it was a lot of learning in process and um, finding the different parts in the joints where it made sense to uh, make those cuts. But in addition to all of that, I tried to I tried to tie in the, the frosty gargan and show the contrast to that, you know, dry landscape of Akshi with, you know, these desert bases that, um, would help the model stand out. It wasn't going to be a similar base. And that's one of the risks of having, you know, like a, let's say a frosty landscape, you know, the, gar the Gargans are at home and they live in snow. And then I put, you know, snow skin, they all kind of become much of a much. So I wanted to kind of make them stand out. And the way I did that was, you know, paint more of a desert theme. But in addition to that, um, to create the real dry landscapes of the desert, I used PVA wood glue and let that dry on the base before I applied the texture paste. And one of the things that I learned was that um, the cracks actually go deeper when you have PVA than when you don't have PVA. So that was an interesting learning. But then in addition, as I was kind of like wrapping up the army, Green Stuff World actually released a product called Liquid Frost that um, you put on, it looks like it looks like a medium. Like when you initially put it on, it becomes a medium, but then um, in a few hours time, it starts to create like ice crystals. And you'll see that as my Gargans are stepping onto that landscape, um, they're not snow, they're made of, you know, whether it's some Aether magic or something, whatever it might be that's mythical, you know, they're bringing the snow and the ice with them onto the battlefield. So as they're stepping forward, they're leaving these ice trails and, you know, this crazy amount of, um, you know, low low heat to the, to the table and drying it all up. So uh, again, it was a nice little way to kind of bring this all together. But ultimately, I, I've had an absolute ball with my son's army. You know, if I had five more man crushes mega gargans forget the man crushes if i had five more mega gargans i have so many different ideas and you just look at the endless spells whether it's the aether void pendulum whether you look at the um the big horn from the um the the beast claw uh, beast claw raiders the uh, beast of chaos um if you if you look at all the different big models and you know different accessories like endless spells there's just an unlimited amount of things you can do with this army and um i have had, had a ball and so much so that i even built a armies on parade board last year that um again really try to tie in that viking raider build that i'm kind of showing off now but um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's something a little bit different. I haven't really shown off my armies in the past other than some sneaky photos you might have noticed on Discord or Twitter or in the battle reports. But here is, um, you know, should, could I could I uh, continue painting this army? Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of detail that I'll be continuing to pick out over time. But just as I'm packing this up, I thought I'd just capture this moment in time and, and show off the army before I start working on my Cult of Slanesh Daughters of Cain. I hope you found that discussion valuable. If you did, give the video the old thumbs up. And if you have a comment or an insight, leave it in the comment section below. 
The champions over here are my AOS coach Patreons and YouTube members. So you guys are bloody legends. Thank you for all the support. If you want to know more about the support programs, the links are below down here in the episode description, along with a link to the Discord server, so we can continue this conversation. Until next time, don't forget to name your characters and have a good one.